Wait, wait. Let's let's get our priorities right. So if you, that's what I'm if, saying, not everybody's deal breaker is the same. <laughs> no, she has been so much on kindness, kindness. Yeah. So if you meet a guy who's very kind, uh, but I mean, right? Like that. That. <laughs> <laughs> you neglect this because of that. If you, if you are kind, then you are disgracing me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. There was a day they put. Hi guys, you are welcome to the channel. My name is Truth, and today I have two of my favorite people here for us to talk about everything: marriage, relationships, love, everything. I know you have already met Stella. Hi, Stella. Hi, everyone. You're welcome welcome to the channel. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have our own beautiful Laura. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now to us, the single people. What is the most important piece of advice that you would give someone who's considering marriage? Hmm. Uh, I think most... I'll go first with this one. Okay. <laughs> so, ever since I met Truth, I think I've been saying this over and over again to her. Just take your time. Okay. There's no need to rush. Amen. You are in competition with nobody. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Look through yourself first before you consider going into another person's life mm -hmm. marriage is no joke my people it mm -hmm. is no joke and it is for mature minds so look through yourself first when you see and you can feel and you know that you're ready to go on this forever journey with another person before you make that effort but in everything consider a kind man I see. ah that's very good I see. Well, I would like you to to respond before I come back and ask her a question. Okay. Yeah. I mine is very similar. Is is that you don't have to rush it because I am so so thankful that I got married in my thirties. Okay. I think that if I got married in my twenties, thinking about who I was then, I would have married someone who would have just I don't know, like just I would have just followed without with a whim you know and not really think consider like okay what do I want I just would always think oh what does this person want what does this person want and kind of go after that but I think having more time to at least from in my experience like getting married older I was able to kind of say like this is what I know I want this is what I know I don't want and you know be able to walk more sure so you think is it about age or is this just that you think around your 30s that you were developed enough or I mean you had matured enough to think that okay I'm making the right decision yeah I mean I think it can happen earlier in life but I think when we rush something that's usually because we may not be ready yet mm -hmm. and so if you're if you feel like you're rushing the whole thing that's when you know you need to slow down <laughs> I see. and you said we should you should marry a kind man mm -hmm. and what is it about kind men? It's, it's not about a, the kind man. Every human being who doesn't have that aspect, you know, having empathy for another person, I feel has a problem. I think it's a mental issue. So having a kind man, I mean, um, there was a time I asked my husband, so before you do anything to me, what do you think about? He said, I asked myself, would I be okay if you did the same thing to me? I and I saw that empathetic attitude there. And honestly, it really got to me. And no long, uh, I just said, I was going to do it. Everybody would think about this before he does anything to you. This is a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, you can marry all the attributes we have in the world. See, a God fearing man is a kind man. Mm -hmm. and, and a wise man is a kind man. Really? All the attributes should end at the person's kindness. And I always tell you, the fact that you marry a rich man doesn't make you rich. Some men are rich, but are not kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will get back to that. Yeah. So do you agree that oh, yes. kindness should be the basis? Because then it's going to go back to when things get tough, are they going to, what's, what is, what's their default? And if their default is kind, then you're going to be okay. Like, that doesn't mean they're going to be perfect or whatever. But like, you know, the the trials and tribulations of life, they they expose. <laughs> what if they are kind, but they are not fun? Because 
we are in a can generation you, can you explain of your fan? Gen Z and well, where the fan is. I wanted to go around and play with play and make what? life. We are Gen Z. Marriage, <laughs> if you want it to be fun, you can make the fun in your own house. Yes. How? Yes. You don't need to go out there before both of you can have fun. You can. You understand. Yeah, you, you can you can create fun. Exactly. But you can't create kind. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh. I like it. Oh. And you see, marriage is about putting in conscious and intentional efforts. Mm. So if you want to create fun, you can intentionally create mm -hmm. fun. Anybody who intentionally creates kindness is fake. Wait. It's fake. The person will be kind to you today because they are conscious of themselves. Oh, let me do this so that she will know I'm kind. Mm -hmm. The next day, as human as you are, it was bad. Right. Fake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So since we are talking about fake and all of that, what are the red flags I, as a single person or any single person out there, should look out for? So both. I don't want it to be focused on just ladies alone, like the red flags ladies should look out for in men, but even the red flags men should look out for in, in women. Yeah, like yeah, before yeah, they yeah. Decide yeah. To marry them. Okay. I think Laura should take it from the oh, biggest one. My, the <laughs> biggest one for me is is do their words match their actions, oh. and this is not gender specific. Hey, <laughs> do, do their words? I mean, it doesn't mean that they do it right every time, but like on an average, can you trust like what they say is what they'll do? Mm. Because at the end of the day when you can't marry someone thinking like oh maybe that part of them will change like you have to <laughs> accept them who no. as they are <laughs> otherwise it's just, you're headed for disaster you and can, you can't change them. yeah okay. wow. you mentioned your red flags i want to come back so you can't change them but you mentioned your red flag okay so i think what laura said cuts across be it a man or a woman um you, you should be a man or woman of your words okay but for me one red flag is I. In fact, I was looking for a kind man. That's yeah. Because I felt if this person is kind, he will treat me right. If this person is kind, he wouldn't let me go broke when he has. If this person is kind, he wouldn't be expecting a hundred percent effort from me when he is giving twenty percent. Mm -hmm. You better preach. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel if if the person is not kind enough. And truth be told, guys, you, you can't change a human being. So mm -hmm. any red flag we mention here, those we are not able to mention, anytime you see it and you sit through with a person to talk it out and you see that this person cannot change, please, please. When you say this person cannot change and you can't change a person, are you saying people can't change? No, people can change, but you cannot change a person. So the person has to be willing or has to want to change yeah. before. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the a green flag is someone who recognizes they have flaws exactly. and that they want to mature and grow. But I think the danger comes when people are like, oh, well, if we're in a relationship long enough or like, I, I love him enough, mm. like he will change, like this part of him will change. It's like, not. Nah, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. Like, let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say um, you you have a boyfriend, okay, and you see this 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 attitude of his. He hurts you countlessly. Tell him, and he tells you, "I wouldn't have done this if you hadn't done this." Mm -hmm. Sort of telling you his reaction is because of your action. This person is not accepting that this is a problem to you, and so the person must make an effort, and you can even choose to say i want to help us make it right but the person is rather seeing you as a problem such a thing is a red flag because he's, he it means he's never going to accept it and when i was getting married our counselor told us that you know what everything you are seeing your boyfriend do right now is actually luring you to marry you so it should be beautiful it should be sweet at this point mm -hmm. when you get married to him and then familiarity sets in whatever he's doing i want to marry mm. so imagine somebody actually attributing his mistakes his his <laughs> his flaws to your actions mm -hmm. what happens when he takes you to his home mm. you always be the problem 
so how do we how are we able to identify these things in in men like if i meet a guy how am i supposed to begin to identify either red flags or green flags my dear him? you don't just get up a day and say i get married and you guys study each other mm-hmm. you like know how and, and, and ask course? ask questions oh. yes, ask questions but what yes. I mean, you mentioned actions aligning with their ways, but what if you ask questions and they give you the answers they think you want you want to hear? Well, then you watch their actions later, and it's like, does it line up? And I think that takes time, you know. Like, it it, it takes. I, I used to say like, and this is what happened with us was like, I need to see you in all four seasons, you know, at least at least a year, just to see if like <laughs> some of these things are consistent, you know, like because you can be like, oh. I'm so in love and like you know whatever but what is consistent throughout all of that and so you'd have to observe and not all of it you have to necessarily communicate like oh I'm watching for this you know in your own mind just be like okay let without me interfering what what is this person what's their default like who are they without me trying to manipulate the situation or you know whatever just like who are they by themselves and- I I also look at how you treat other people. Mm-hmm. It tells me the kind of person you are. Yeah. Mine is when anything happens, the first five seconds your reaction speaks a lot about you. To me. So let's say you go out, so you started seeing each other, you are talking on phone, and let's say he gets a call while you guys are talking and he goes like, Oh, it's an office call, let me pick it up. Yes, it's work, okay. And you don't hear from him till the next day. Um, okay. How do you do that? Mm. Or you walk with him in town and somebody does something and his first reaction is to hit the person. Oh. Flee! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so, whilst you are you are with the person, you, you are at your university course. It is it it is more than a PhD. <laughs> you need to watch out for the tiniest little thing. Most men actually, th- from our part of the world, from mm-hmm. Ghana, most men actually think if I'm able to buy her gifts, if I'm able to spend on her, she might think I love her. But hello, gentlemen, some of us, those things do not move us. Okay. Hey. 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 <laughs> before you came in, we were working. Oh. We could buy those things for ourselves. Okay. But the little things you don't look out for is what we watch. Because I, I I just can't be with you in public and let's say a waiter accidentally pours something on you and you start screaming and shouting you know the cost of my dress <laughs> it's, so, it's so awkward it means yeah. this person this is a stranger imagine you and just him in the house mm. i will still use my word <laughs> <laughs> Wait. so Will you ever find a perfect person if you are going to watch out for all of these things and none of us are perfect? No, but it will make me are not perfect. Mm-hmm. So what are the things that maybe we should be like deal breakers and deal makers? Like things you feel like at least you can let go of these things and maybe if he does this, maybe we shouldn't forgive and just walk out. I mean, I think that's different for every person. Like some okay. some of your deal deal breakers may not be my deal exactly. breakers. But I think what for me, when I think of uh, when the person um, messes up, what is the what? What do they do next? You know what I mean? Like because your relationship is going to be a series of I messed up. You know, we talk it out. <laughs> Will you forgive me? <laughs> and so, if, if they don't know how to repair, then either e- either they need to learn, and they're not ready for marriage. Or you just need to flee. Like Laura said, some, some people actually look out for the very big things. But I can talk for myself. Those little things you are not paying attention to. That is what I pay attention to. You know, I, I would I would come visit you and mm-hmm. my eyes are everywhere in the room. Okay. I want to see how you keep your stuff in your room. Okay. Are you organized? Because I know I know my weakness, so I need somebody to compliment me. <laughs> so we need someone to clean. Wait. <laughs> Why is that person's deal breaker? Is just so sad, but like the person expects you to be the 
there were no, it's, it's not a cleaner it's complementing each other so when i say i'm looking at it I'm, you see some people will just get it and <laughs> it's whole shirts truck pants shoes everything is on the door <laughs> and, <laughs> the room. and then you go like so who is after him when he does this this one exactly so you know these things might not be deal breaker for people but so for some of us i feel what if we start having children do i start picking after you and start picking after our children these things you can sit with them have a talk about it and maybe you can have um, him change but when it's attitude now i feel this person is like 35 36 years he's mm -hmm. been doing this for 36 years of his life huh so will you reject somebody because of the way they eat? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's let's get our priorities right. So if you, that's what I'm saying, not everybody's deal breaker the same. <laughs> she has been told so much on kindness, kindness. Yeah. So if you meet a guy who's very kind, uh, but I mean. Right, like <laughs> <laughs> you reject me because of that. If, if you are kind, then you are disgracing me. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. There was a day they put something on our page. I went to a, an all female secondary school, and mm. they were like, What do you look out for when you see a man for the first time? Mm -hmm. Who was saying they are flabby and this other thing that's going on. And one lady just wrote, Come here, was the last thing. I said, Your teach. Um, hey. Yes. <laughs> it says it all. That is where everything starts from. <laughs> yeah. Mine is kind of simple. I smile, was it for me? Because, mm. and it, mm, and do I say it? <laughs> yeah. You agree? Well, it was when I first saw pictures of my now husband Philip. Okay. I he, he all he wasn't smiling in any of them, <laughs> and so I was like, mm, I'm not that attracted. Oh. And then I saw a picture of him smiling. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm about to reject the man. <laughs> oh. So wait, would you have rejected him just based on smile without even getting to know? I told him you the first ways? thing is to get attracted. So if you have, if if you you are not attracted to the person. How do you get to know each other to even start thinking of this? You know, so so the first thing you see, you should you should be able to understand this. There are there are so many different ways. Mm -hmm. One would be what would attract you to the person. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. After the attraction has gotten you two together, then the deal breakers and the red flags come in. But if you are, you see, if if a guy is shabbily dressed, mm -hmm. when he tries to get your attention. I don't know about you, but I would definitely not pay attention. But dressing can always be changed. I said shabbily. You so, can always, so, someone's no, fashion so can change that, in a year, no, right? No, no, no. That's right. why you are the I woman said, to come the in. The first thing to get you close to the person, to even say hello, mm -hmm. it matters. I see. So that is, that is one thing. And then from then, after you said your hellos and exchange contact, then you can get into being friends and start looking for the red flags. And I'll also add, if it's if it is meant to be, God can get around even the shabbily dress. You know, like exactly. that person might have been like, I don't know, you had to meet him because y'all were in a particular, you were putting a group together. You know what I mean? And so then you you met that way, and then wait, and you start getting to know him. Wait a minute, and then you see him in a different outfit, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, what is meant to be will be really. <laughs> Is I it think, really I think, true that yes. what it's meant to be will be? We, I, I, I especially believe when it, it comes to marriage. I, I believe yes, it. You know, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if I share personal <laughs> things, but I have my husband being a friend around me for almost four years. Ooh. At the point, I was even telling him how my relationship is going, oh. and he was a friend. Oh, yes, and he was pastoring my life. No, <laughs> wait. No. <laughs> But I, I chose not to pay attention to him. But in, at, at the end of the day, what happened? Mm -hmm. oh my. I believe that what is meant to be will be my bad comes to the fault. Because if he had stopped, I don't think he would have been married. But I thought what is meant to be is supposed to be. Don't so leave it hanging. Hold on to it so that it will be. 
let's talk about this whole physical attraction i feel like my generation mm -hmm. we like all the glam and the pictures and you just want to see his pictures like ooh, you know how important is it in in marriage like physical attraction ooh. just be looks height color hair everything ooh, how important will not is comfort it? you when you are down ooh. <laughs> will not help you guys build a future then. amen <laughs> <laughs> but I told you just said it's supposed to attract you to the person. That doesn't mean the person should be dressed in all suits and with some shiny shoes you can see your face in there. Wait. So if I meet a guy who has all these things you're talking about, kind. How do you know the guy is kind? If so because some people if you haven't just even said hello, how do you know this gentleman standing there is kind? No, I'm saying sometimes you can meet someone mm -hmm. and you get to know them. Like as a friend. So before you Maybe get just to know as a them. friend. Sometimes it starts as friendship. And I don't think you, you choose your friends based on looks mm -hmm. and all of that, mm -hmm. right? Sure, sure. So you're friends with this person. You you get to know they have a good heart, they are mm -hmm. they are kind, they are godly, mm -hmm. good character and all of that. But you are not physically let's say attracted to them when it comes to marriage what do you do in that case Laura, so I'll come and link. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do well, i mean you don't want to force anything i mean so i'm trying to imagine like your scenario of like you see they have good characteristics mm -hmm. but you're not physically attracted to them mm -hmm. i mean I, I wouldn't force it <laughs> i absolutely so will, 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 will you allow a good man go just because you are my dear the good man is good but <laughs> before anything would happen in the bedroom you need that attraction yeah you hear stories of people who are having intimacy with their husbands and they say they have to imagine somebody else that so, that's not intimacy <laughs> yeah so, so you would you would need you would need to love or like those things let me be frank with you okay. after marriage intimacy is not like what they talk about out there sometimes it would have to take both of you to put in the effort yes to learn so, each other yes yeah, so what if you are not attracted to this person i mean you wouldn't even you wouldn't even start exactly <laughs> but what is this so it, the reason why i'm also asking this is that i feel like you know this generation they have made certain kinds of people the standard for attraction so now every girl wants a tall dark and handsome man Every guy okay. wants like when a, did the dark come in the picture? I thought they wanted. It was always tall, dark, and handsome. Fair, with, with that, that, that is that is the saying. <laughs> okay, yes, well that that's the a saying. saying that tall, dark, and handsome. And even the look at the movies, the, the main character come. is usually with the six tall, dark, exactly. And the girl is some Cinderella type of girl with some shapes. I don't want no that. six pack, first of all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so rock hard. What you going to do, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like so the movies and media and all of that has shaped our minds for all of us to think that I need to marry a tall dark and handsome man. That's why divorce rates are going high and high every day. Okay, but if you are using that as a standard and you you have a good man with a good heart and all of that, but because maybe he's short, right? He, he has everything, but he's short. But in your mind, you want a tall dark and handsome man. Should you let the person go just be based on that? Well, I think you also have to you said you're using that standard like so why are you using know. that standard it's, these things are already so, 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 so do you some introspection influencing yeah us. have you seen people even getting married and maybe they'll reject someone because they feel like yeah it's not a standard for their thing like well, then, will be then like, you need hey, to so tell a power way to go marry to this person. You know, you get, this is where my controversy is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about what you would say. If it's good for me, I go for it. Yeah, yeah. You need to be able to look inside yourself and be like, okay, exactly. why do I think the way I think? And start to peel back those layers. If you find, oh, my standard has been what I saw in a movie. But these things have, have to been. go into the movie. I don't know the word to use. What? It has. Like we just grew up with the same the same kind of movies it's the attractive thing so we don't know how we've been why your you generation i feel like generation i think like it's that, I, don't know. I don't know but out there it's tall that and handsome and you see but you see a lot of people getting married and the men are not all that handsome yeah. your generation <laughs> yeah. getting married with two men with one pack yeah <laughs> I, but I, I just i think that like those standards are not like immovable like you can recognize like just start asking yourself why do i think the way i think mm -hmm. like why do i like, when i'm thinking when i'm looking for a person this is what i'm looking for and then you ask 
okay, why am I looking for that? Is it for uh, the, the prospect of a, of a good future or is it because I've been told this is, you know, and be able to kind of peel those things apart. If you haven't done that yet, I think that's a good place to start. If you are thinking of just dating the person, I would say you can blab and then blab about all these things you're talking about. But if it's marriage, you should be looking into the future, not now. Mm -hmm. Whatever physique, whatever you are looking at, I'm not saying a short man would make a proposal to a tall man later on in life. But you should be thinking about the important things in life. What you lay your head. But that's what I just said that. Everything. So if you're looking at this person being short mm -hmm. because your friends are going to say this, the question you ask yourself is, looking into the future, would this man still be there for me? Would we be able to achieve whatever we want to achieve? That's what you should ask yourself. And like Laura said, if you ask yourself reasons why I have this um, checklist, there's a movie like that. <laughs> if, you, if you think that the, the reason why you have this checklist is because of society, it's because of friends, then you're not living for yourself. You're living for the glam. Mm -hmm. And the friends won't be there when, you know, you and your husband you are, are doing... Yeah. Right. They are so busy. And you wouldn't want to take your marital issues out. So you suffer alone. You die. Uh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> 